cutting blades and the numbers on them, on the reverse of them are so fiddly and I, I can't see them so it's a good idea and you, you could probably do the same is get a marker pen and just number in permanent marker on the middle, that's number one, two, three, four, five, just so you can easily find them without having to squint. So I'm going to start with my favourite. I hope you love which is shape number two, cutting blade number two. So it's a good generic so shape. The first thing I'm going to do is so I'm going to cut away the rabbit. So he's going to be white. The background is going to be dark, and then the detail around the edge is also going to be white, which is the colour of the base of the card. So I do want this to be quite sketchy. You are my best friend. You are my best friend. Remember, I always love you. The lino cutter um, flat to the, the lino surface, but another technique would be to turn it slightly on its side because you've got a profile on the tip of the blade. You're going to get a different mark, a different shape mark if you go straight on, straight forward, um, or if you tilt to the, to the side slightly. I just want there to be a few marks on my rabbit's belly. like around his legs, I'm going to swap to blade number one because it's a slightly smaller profile, slightly more v-shaped so it should be able to get around these sharper corners. What I find with profile number one is you have to hold it slightly more upright um, to, to get a result. Won't even remember our younger days. So my darling, so my darling. We're going to get round these smaller, tighter lines. Swap to the blade number one. You are my best friend. Remember, I always love you. So I haven't drawn a lot of detail, so I'm just referring back to my sketch. The top one comes round, round from his neckline, kicks out and up at the end. three which is a slightly wider profile still a u-shape like blade number two similar more more rounded than blade number two but similar size but not as v pointy as blade number one for this i'm going to carve some of the tree trunk at the side to just be almost look like tree bark so I'm going down and picking up, like I'm digging with, with a spade almost. I'm going to leave 
leave it at that and then I'm going to intermix some smaller marks, some finer lines just to blend it in. But I'm going to do the same around this side here. As I've been using this blade, these marks I quite like the very rounded mark that this has made to I want some of that mark on the, on the bottom of the woodland floor, almost like the debris. Could be bits of stone or pebble or... I'm cutting this midnight moon, full moon out by turning the liner and keeping my tool static. I'm going to leave some of that moon showing. I don't want it completely blanked out. I want it to feel woodcut, lino cut. to blade number four which is quite fat and quite wide quite shallow so it'll take away a lot um, from the surface of the liner digging in and then scooping out towards the end to try and create this and different shapes and sizes and textures there. I just want it to look quite messy and I'm not going to take those leaves right back to the trunk to the, to the top of the branches here because I quite like I quite like this to be quite dark when it prints and be quite light where I cut away here. We counted every black passing your house beneath the hill and up and Someone called us in the kitchen with maps, a mountain range, a piggy bank, a vision to remove dimension. But please remember me fondly. I heard from someone you're still. Some eloquent graffiti like we'll meet again and fuck the man. Tell my mom. Finally, just going back to my cutting blade number two, my favourite cutting um, 
my favourite blade that I use most of the time and I'm just stroking the surface gently and slowly to just create some almost blades of grass which could be grass or they could be just light coming from the moon but it just adds a bit of detail and just breaks up those gaps in between any elements that you've carved into the face of your vinyl plate and have them just going off the line knowing when to stop is also a, a skill. So looking at this now, I know I'm going to have this lovely, where the, where the liner has been untouched, it's going to be a really nice dark area of ink, whatever colour I choose to print with. And all of these lovely marks around the outside and across the hair, jumping hair in the middle, they're going to be white. So, I think I'm done. I'm going to stop. Let's see how he prints.